all attendees are in listen only mode. Good morning. Hello, everyone. I would first like to extend a warm welcome to those of you attending today's presentation, Heat Press Helper, A Beginner's Guide. Um, if you're in the right place, what I'd first like to ask if you could um, type in to make sure that you can see my screen and you can also hear my voice. That would be great. If at any point during the presentation you have any trouble viewing my screen or hearing my voice, just send me a message, type it in in your um, question field, and then I'll be able to respond or make adjustments. And also, if you have any questions during this presentation, please feel free. I will have some time toward the end. I usually um, like to take questions at the end, but if they're relevant during, then I can definitely answer your question at the time. Once again, I'd like to thank everyone for joining today, and just a little bit about myself. My name is Jody Weiler. I've worked for Stalls for a little over five years in the customer service department, and I started off in general customer service, and then I transferred into the logo part department, which just opened up a whole world for me, and um, about, you know, getting to know the garment industry. So I've traveled to trade shows with Stalls. I've really gotten to see... Um, all the different facets of the garment industry. And so I began to think, you know, there, there's so many people out there who are, especially at trade shows when I've talked to them, who are thinking about getting into the business. They don't know where to start. There's all this equipment at these trade shows, and they're just really overwhelmed. They're just really, they're not even sure how to begin. And so I decided to put together this presentation just as a beginner's guide for anybody who's doing research about starting a business, Where's a good place to start? Whoever's, anybody who's looking at heat presses, um, you know, what kind of heat press do I get? And so, you know, if you're thinking about starting a decoration business and you don't know where to begin, getting a heat press really is a great way to get started with a minimal investment and yielding high profit right off the, the get-go. So with that being said, let's start the presentation. So what we're going to go through today um, is first we're going to talk a little bit about the four really popular elements of the garment industry, silk screen, direct to garment, embroidery, sublimation, and then also how a heat press is used in each of these businesses. And then we'll move into the different types of heat presses and each of their components. And then we'll move on to what do you need to go with your heat press, the accessories and some other fun stuff that are nice to have but that you don't necessarily need. And then finally, just really kind of open up your mind to that idea that if you can think it, you can print it. All kinds of textile and non-textile items that you can, that you can, um, excuse me, that you can apply with a heat press. So let's first start with the garment industry, uh, screen printing. What is screen printing? Screen printing is actually a printing technique. It's actually an ancient technique that uses a woven mesh in order to support an ink blocking stencil. So what you see on your screen there in the bottom right hand corner is a screen and that has like a woven mesh in it. And so you print a picture and you block out certain parts of that screen and you use the squeegee to push the inks through the open parts in order to create the design or to, in order to get the desired design onto your stencil. Just a little fun fact, screen printing is actually an ancient decoration technique first identified and used by the Song Dynasty in China around 960 AD. Um, and it was actually an art form. They actually silk screened their, the scribes, silk screened in writing, and, and it was really a form of art. And so Andy Warhol, good old Andy Warhol, actually highly popularized the use of screen printing or serigraphy in the United States. And then the first multicolor rotary screen, like the one you see here in the bottom left-hand corner with the six or seven arms there, um, that was developed by an American entrepreneur, Michael Vassilantoni, in 1960. And, you know, if you look around anywhere you go, mo a I don't want to say most, 
a lot of the decoration on garments you see is silkscreen. Now, it was interesting. I took my dog this weekend to this place that we have here called Eastern Market. It's like an open-air outdoor market on Saturdays. And obviously, I notice what people are wearing anywhere I go. And, um, and I did notice, though, that there were several people who had these really cool designs on their shirts, and it was all heat transfer vinyl all of it. Um, I did also see a lot of mixed media with silk screen as the background or as the actual design and then and we'll see some slides of that later on in this presentation and then heat transfer material kind of that mixing the media in order to get that texture but at any rate I would say it's probably the most popular method for decorating t-shirts today and it is really a great way to get a detailed colorful design onto a garment. Some of the drawbacks are that the equipment and the accessories are expensive, so it makes um, it makes it a difficult startup endeavor at times. Also, it's really more practical for larger runs, 30 pieces or more, in order to have it be profitable of the exact same design. And really, most silk screeners do have a heat press because it is difficult and expensive to create changing designs such as like names and numbers on a jersey. Oftentimes, screeners will opt to screen their logo onto the front of a jersey or a, design, or a, a shirt or whatever it is they're applying and then apply vinyl names and numbers, whatever that thing is that's changing. They'll do it in vinyl on the back simply because it's more cost effective as far as labor and material goes. Let's take a look at embroidery. Um, embroidery is actually a process in which actual stitches are used to create a pattern on fabrics, and it's also another ancient form of decoration. Traditionally, embroidery was, again, used as an art form and actually hand-sewn onto fabric, but today's embroidery is typically done by machinery. And you can see at the bottom in the middle screen, that is actually a multi-head, but I only... Um, focused in on the three heads. So it has a multi-head embroidery machine and you can see the separate spools of thread. So each needle has a different color that you send the art in from your computer and it's programmed into the embroidery machine and it knows what color to stitch. The machine in the upper right hand corner is a, sing corner is a single head embroidery machine and as you can see you kind of hoop the material that you want sewn onto that green hoop at the bottom and then it does the same kind of work um, that the multi-head does. Embroidery is an extremely popular method of decoration today and the nice thing, I mean definitely one of the pros is that it's a very unique decoration method and it also offers a high-end finished product and so when you look at something, I mean embroidery is embroidery is embroidery, you know, that is embroidered and it's just unique. It's, you can't really replicate it. Some drawbacks, and I don't want to say drawbacks, I don't, I don't really like saying pros and cons because I do think that all of these elements of the garment industry have their place. I don't think one is superior over the other. I think everything has its place and we kind of need it all. But if you're getting into the business, obviously you can't do it all. So it's nice to kind of start somewhere and then build as you move along and as you are able to invest more in your business. So I guess we'll say some of the drawbacks or some of the um, cons are that it is a craft and, and it's not to say that it can't be learned but it is definitely a skill learned over time. The equipment can be expensive and if you want to do any type of volume with the when you consider the labor and the materials invested, generally your quote is going to be on the higher side. I mean, it's a high-end product. And many people want the look of embroidery without having to pay for it. So if this is your only sole method of decoration, you can definitely limit your customer base. Uh, one increasingly popular method of decoration is applique, which is actually fabric sewn onto another piece of fabric. And I actually talk to a lot of embroiderers who will call and they'll say, I've been embroidering for 20 years and I've never done applique. And it's, and I just tell them, it is so easy. It is so, so, so easy. And it's just another way if you get into applique that you get to say yes. You know, my goal here is for you to be able to say yes to every job. Sometimes you have to contract some things out, but you still have that opportunity to say yes. So applique is actually a method in which fabric is sewn onto another piece of fabric in order to offer, again, a one-of-a-kind one look. A heat press is used 
always buy embroiders in order to either apply embroidered patches and also to heat apply the applique after sewing in order to get that adhesive going in order to prevent puckering after washing. Let's move on to direct to garment. So direct to garment is exactly what it says. It's a method of printing directly onto a substrate. And this is really becoming an, an ever popular method of decorating due to its soft hand. It has a really soft hand when it's printed, particularly if you're printing on lights. And it's also very vibrant. Some of the flip side is that for the new decorator, these machines are really expensive. And so it's, again, it's a hard thing when you're an entry level um, business to get started in. And you can essentially only print onto 100% cotton. Now, when the machines first came out, you could really only print onto lights and whites. And what they developed was a, a way that you can actually print almost like a white ink onto a dark as a base in order to prevent that dye migration from coming through. And once that dries, then you can print over that design with your colors. So you can print on lights and whites, but it still has to be 100% cotton. Some of the, um, and also a heat press is always used in direct to garment in order to cure the ink at the end of the printing process. So let's wrap up with sublimation. So sublimation is actually only for synthetic materials, polyester, acrylic, rayon, nylon. And the way it works is the ink actually turns to a gas as it's heated and sublimates onto the synthetic material. Sublimation always requires a specially treated fabric in order to be able to print on it. And it also involves printing to a paper process, usually like a treated sublimation, paper specifically created for sublimation, and then requires a heat application with a heat press onto the fabric from the paper. And what's interesting about that is you can always tell a sublimated garment where, because it'll, A, it's not cotton, and B, it'll have all this vibrant color, and that's what's really cool about sublimation. But when you turn it inside out and look at the inside of the garment, it's one color. There's nothing, there's no, the print actually doesn't um, seep through. And that's, I always wonder, like, how do they do that while well, it's actually printed onto a paper and printed onto there? Um, sublimation is huge in soccer. Most soccer jerseys are sublimated. And then you can see kind of the comic books, and so there's other purposes for it. But as far as the sporting industry goes, I would say soccer uses a sublimated type jersey the most. Okay, so you decide, well, you know, I think a heat press is a good way to get started having done all my research on the other aspects of the business. And even if I am a silk screener, I need a heat press anyway. Or if I'm direct to garment, I need a heat press anyway. So you get online and you go to eBay and you see a $200 heat press. And then you go somewhere else and you see a $900 heat press. And you think, well, I'm just going to get the $200 heat press. And I guess what I'd like to say to you on that note is you're investing in a business. And, per, and Hotronics is a division of stalls, and so I'm in no way pushing a Hotronics heat press on anybody. But what I am saying is, is that if you ask around or look on any t-shirt forum or go anywhere in the business and you say, I'm in the market for a heat press, which heat press should I get? Hotronics is going to be at the top of everybody's list. They're going to say Hotronics, maybe they'll say George Knight, maybe they'll say Hicks. And maybe, here's, okay, so when you're doing your shopping, these are the things that I really want, would like you to consider. The question to ask is, what type of heating element is in the heat press? Is it a long, there's different types of heating elements. Now, Hotronics uses almost like a coil, not almost, it is a coiled type, so almost it like snakes through, and it's all one unit. Your heat, heating element is always going to be in the top platen of your machine. It's never going to be in the bottom. All your heat transfers down from the top. And the idea behind that is, A, a Hotronics machine's heating element is guaranteed for life, and you'll never get cold spots because if the heating element goes out, the entire heating element goes out, and you know it. Now, a lot of the less 
expensive machines, they have like bars, each a separate bar, each a separate unit running from a separate wire running down the top of the heat platen. And so if one of those bars goes out, you'll never know because your heating element is still heating up, your press is still turning on, but you're getting cold spots and your designs are lifting <clears throat> and your customers are bringing your materials back or your garments back and they're saying it's not sticking. 90% of the time it's due to cold spots. That's the thing that's going to kill your heat press right there. And so then we move into the next thing. What is the warranty on my $200 machine? I'm here to tell you that Hotronics has, a, like I stated, a lifetime warranty on the heating element. And depending on which machine you get, five to six years on major components, two years on mining component, minor, two years usually on the, um, the motherboard, and a year on the main component. And then how can I service my machine? If I call the place that I ordered it from, this kind of eBay seller, am I going to be able to get my sh machine serviced? And if I get it and it only has lasted, it's only turned on for me to two, for two to three weeks and I need service on it. Have I just thrown my $200 out of the window and was it worth it? And then finally, how do I get new parts if I need them? How long are they going to take? How long is it going to take me for to get my parts in? How long is my heat press going to be down for the count before I can get it back up and, and get back in business? And so these are definitely the things to consider. And the only thing I can say to you is, just like everything else in life, you get what you pay for. So if you're considering investing in a new business and you can invest in a better machine now, I would say do it. It's going to last you 6, 8, 10, 12, maybe 15 years. It's kind of like buying a car. It's like buying anything, you know, you get what you pay for. So that being said, then it's time to decide what kind of press do I need for the kind of decoration that I plan on doing. And heat presses come in all different sizes. And so we have the very small heat press, um, usually called a 6x6, six six, and that is nice for uh, baby items, doing labeling, hips, left chest, things like that, sleeves, little logos on sleeves. And then you have the small, the 11 by 15. And what's nice about the smaller presses is that typically they're used for youth garments. So if you are doing an extra large jersey and a 14 or 16 inch wide design, you are going to have to apply it in two steps. You're going to have to do one half and then the other half. But the benefit of a small machine is, is that it's portable. And we actually just printed, presented a webinar last month on how to go mobile with your heat press. So what's nice about the 11 by 15 is you can take it anywhere to events, doing little bachelorette parties, doing key press parties, at children's parties. Um, so that is definitely a nice thing. And so if you're interested in going mobile with your heat press, you can definitely look in the archives. Um, one of our presenters, Ken Chadwick, it's called Going Mobile, Taking Your Heat Press on the Road. And... It has everything you need to know about taking your heat press with you, a checklist on all the things you'll need, how to get started, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So a medium size press of 15 by 15 or a 16 by 16 is usually large enough for most decorators. And don't get me wrong, any of your heat presses are portable. I mean, with the exception of the the air compressor, like the air powered ones, those are a little difficult to take places. Those are a couple hundred pounds, but so this one you could still take with you if you decided to go mobile, but it's also large enough to do those kind of extra large designs. And then you have the large, and that's a 16 by 20. And if you can get into a 16 by 20, this is usually what I recommend, you will rarely have a need for another press unless you decide to do caps. Then that's the one thing you need that um, that beveled platen in order to heat apply onto caps. But if you can get into a 16 by 20, you will rarely have a need for another press. You can do those extra large designs. You can do football jerseys, which are largely oversized. Hockey jerseys, which are oversized in order to accommodate for all the padding. Legs, sleeves. And then typically you also have interchangeable platens that you could put a smaller platen on in order to do your different designs, maybe tote bags or youth garments or even baby garments. And then finally, you have the cap sleeve or the cap press, which is an actual 
specific heat press for doing caps. Now, it's not for caps only. I mean, it's really nice because of that small platen. You could do sleeves, hips, baby, left chest, gloves. Um, oh, my gosh, the list is endless of things that you can do with a cap press. So now we come into the three, what I call the wise men. Some people call it the holy trinity. There's a million names for that little cocktail of combination in order to be able to heat press properly. And those three elements are time, temperature, and pressure. So the first is, when we say time, we mean how long do I have to have my heat of my top platen lowered, pressed onto the lower platen, onto the garment, in order to get the proper adhesion, in order to get that adhesive on the back of my heat transfer vinyl to stick optimally. And then the second thing is the temperature. At what temperature? What is the optimal temperature for this? Taking into account the substrate below, whether it's nylon, polyester, cotton, those all have different temperature tolerances. Um, combined with what is what temperature is going to give me the op optimal adhesion of the material that I'm actually applying. And then finally, how much pressure do I need? And so when we're talking about pressure, if you look at this little window and you see that number three there, that is actually the Hotronics Auto Clam that has a digital pressure readout, which is nice because then you always know what pressure you're at. That's set at a three, so that's actually set for a light pressure. And so some materials, some garments, and some heat transfer materials require light pressure, which is usually like a one to a four on a Hotronics machine. Five to seven is a medium pressure. And uh, anything over seven, seven to nine, is a firm pressure. So it is the mixture of that. And as you can see, if you look at this little window, how easy this is to set. You just vary between the temperature and the time. The pressure is actually set with this little knob that you see on the right hand, you can see the black kind of, it's on like something that screws over the top of the platen. That's actually how you adjust your pressure. But if you lower your platen, you're going to get a pressure readout. And then all you do is change your mode to vary between the temperature at the time, up and down, set your time, temper, and pressure, and you're good to go. I mean, it just couldn't be any easier. So now let's move into the types and styles of heat presses. So when you're shopping for a heat press and you're deciding, okay, I know what size I want now, but what type do I want? And then you're like, oh my God, there's like six or seven different types of heat presses. So which one am I going to um, go with? So here's your options. We have a clamshell style heat press. Now, those offer a space-saving design. They're super easy to transport, like we talked about going mobile or even moving it around your shop. They're available in an automatic open or a manual. The one you see in the center of your screen, <clears throat> excuse me, is a manual. That's the Hotronics Mac Pro Max Press. You manually um, open and close that. And then the one you see in silver is actually an auto clam. Now, the nice thing about the automatic open is A, on the autoclam you get your digital pressure readout, which you won't get on the with the max. You will have a digital time and um, temperature readout, which is nice. But also, let's say you are heat applying, the phone rings, you answer the phone, and, oh, my God, I have a design on there. Well, the auto open is going to open manual or automatically at the set, the time that the amount of register time that you set it to, so you will never over apply a design. It just kind of really takes a lot of pressure off of you when you're busy, you're trying to multitask. You can also, since you know it's auto open, while it's heat applying, you can also be setting up your next design, getting that next garment ready to, ready to go. So really, it saves you money because time is money when it comes to labor. And then we have the draw style heat press. The draw style heat press, the benefits of that are, and you can see on your right hand side it opens like a drawer and that's why it's called the draw style heat press. It offers a heat free workspace, which you're not going to get with the clam. The clam, obviously since it opens, you have kind of that heat coming out with you. And 
me being a new decorator, I did get a few burnt knuckles, which you're not going to get with the draw style press because you're platen, the heat remains stationary, and what you're doing is you're pulling that drawer out, you're dressing the garment onto it, and then you're lowering it under the platen. So it's a completely heat-free workspace. So that's another thing to decide. Do I want the auto open feature, really, which is the difference to me, in my mind, between a clamshell and the other type, do, am I willing to have a heated workspace and maybe a couple burnt knuckles in order to have the convenience of that auto, auto open feature? Or is it more important for me to have that heat free workspace and just kind of have it stationary? And then you have the swinger heat press, which is actually historically our most popular press was that swing away. <laughs> So it opens straight up and down, but as you can see, there's that lever on the top plat and over to the left, it has the black knob attached to it, and the top plat actually swings away. So again, you're in the work, work, heat-free workspace because you're actually just moving the heat away from, saving yourself some knuckles. But the swinger does require, obviously, more room in your workspace because of that swinging out on the platen. And so a lot of our customers were saying, we love the draw press, we love the swing press, we think they're the coolest things in the world, and we decided to start or to develop the Hotronics Fusion. Now the Hotronics Fusion is actually a combination of the draw press, like you see on the left, and it also swings away with the turn, a quarter turn of a rod. I mean, it's that simple in order to get that option. So just to let you know, we have retired the draw press and the swinger press because we did come out with the fusion. But I added those in because when you go shopping for your heat press, and let's say you're looking at other brands, they're going to have swingaways, they're going to have draws. So I wanted you to specifically know what the benefits were of each. So we have the draw swing combo with the Hotronics Fusion. The Hotronics Fusion, the touch screen is or the the screen on the front, all your controls are actually touch screen. You can only get this press from Hotronics. It has an easy platen change, so with just the quarter turn of a rod, you can take your larger platen out. The Fusion is only available in a 16 by 20. You can take your larger platen out. You can set in your interchangeable platen. I mean, it's like that. It's super easy. But the coolest thing that you're not going to find with any other heat press is that that as you can see in the, the photo in the right-hand screen, the upper right, is that it's fully open on the bottom and threadable. And so all the other presses, and all of our presses historically, the only way to kind of create them was to have, they either had foots or they had something on the bottom platen. And so you had to insert pillows and whatnot in order to get the, um, you know, get the garment on. And the nice thing about this is it's fully open. So you can do the front of a design, of a jersey or shirt and the back without ever having to pull the shirt off the plat and you just kind of rotate it around. It's just an awesome feature. And then we have the air, air fusion. And so if you are looking into doing a high volume, this is the kind of machine that you need, something that's powered by an air compressor. The Air Fusion is totally new for us. We just rolled it out at, at the Atlantic City this year. And it has all the features of a Fusion, fully threadable. It's also semi-automatic. And so as you can see, it doesn't have a way to lower and raise the platen. And as you can see in the right picture, it's done with that little foot pedal um, at the bottom. So it's completely semi-automatic, hands-free, which is really, really cool. Also has the easy platen change and is also fully threadable. Now you can see the little wheelie stand, not little, but the wheelie stand that it's on. That we have just, um, Hatronics has just come out with the heat press caddy, which is a really cool thing because for $2.99 you can turn any of your Hatronics presses into a fully threadable machine and also be able to wheel it around your shop. So that is just out of this world. And um, 
Stalls does or Hatronics does have one or more patents pending on the heat press caddy, but that is available for order. They are taking pre-orders for that right as we speak. So then you move into, okay, now I know what kind of heat, what size heat press I want. I know what style heat press I want. I've ordered my heat press. What else am I going to need in order to get going? So the accessories you will absolutely need is a, a cover sheet. Now there's two different kinds of cover sheets. We have um, this kind of easy to clean, semi-glossy finish. It's fully flexible. It's durable cover sheet. And when you heat apply it, you can see up in the top, up in the photo there, you can, it'll give you a more glossy finish on your designs. And then what we call craft paper is for short term use, but it is still reusable, absolutely. And you want to use it on some of the specific CAD cut materials. You also, if you plan on doing any digital transfers, which a digital transfer is a a heat transfer vinyl that's been put through a full color um, echo solvent printer. So it's definitely high quality, built to last for 30 garments against fading, for 30 washes against fading. But you can apply it with your heat press. So it's another option to silk screening. And also it's an option to direct a garment. So you are definitely able to provide those full color designs all with your heat press. But if you're doing digital, you typically want to use craft paper for that. Also with sublimated garments, and it the craft paper offers a matte finish. So your cover sheet is $8.95, and the craft paper is $8.95 to order. So it's kind of like get both, and then you'll have everything you need. Or start off with one or the other, and then get both down the road. Another absolutely thing that I would say you need is the quick slip pad protector. These are the three things I really tell people they have to start with. The quick slip pad pr protector fits over the bottom platen of your heat press, and it does a lot of things. It allows easier on and off for your garments. Your garments are just going to slide on and off. Easy to wipe away dirt and debris, whereas your pad on the bottom is silicone and so if it gets dirty or you get ink on it it's not quite as easy to clean and then it also protects that silicone pad from lifting inevitably if you're putting garments on and off on and off day in day out the corners of that silicone pad are going to end up lifting now it's a hundred dollars to replace your silicone pad and i think 1695 for the glue in order to be able to get it down so the quick slip pad protector lasts a long time its benefits are absolutely immeasurable you're protecting that silicone pad underneath making everything easier to clean and your garments are sliding on faster so i just can't stress enough just get started with, start off with that because you're, it's worth its weight in gold. And then if you're getting into direct a garment, the upper platen protector is also a nice thing to have. And it's also, even if you're just doing main heat printing, it does protect your upper platen. And I would put this in the, in the category of things that are nice to have, but you don't absolutely need to get started. Um, but in direct garment it also prevents ink and dye buildup on that upper platen. Now, the upper platen is Teflon coated, so it's typically pretty easy to clean. But the nice thing about the upper platen protector is it prevents it from scratching against maybe some zippers or buttons if you forget to put a cover sheet on or something like that. So it is nice to have that added protection, but it's definitely not something you absolutely need to get started off with. Um, some other things you'll need in order to get started is either Teflon pillows or Print Perfect pads, preferably both, but you can definitely start off with either if you're just getting in. Now, let me explain to you the difference between a Teflon pillow and a Print Perfect pad. The pillow, actually, its purpose is it's nice for mesh or reversible jerseys in order to prevent the adhesive from going through when you're heat applying to the other side. So you'll always want to use it when you're using mesh, when you're heat applying onto mesh. They're also easy to clean and durable. But its main purpose is, is if you have a garment with seams, zippers, buttons, any type of 
impediment because what will happen is, is if you don't put the pillow in, you lower your heat platen down, you've got that zipper or seam, which is actually the heat platen is just kind of lifted. It's only getting that far down. So you're not getting an even pressure or temperature onto the rest of the garment. So what will happen is your designs, you're going to hand them to your customer. They may look good for a little while. After a couple of washings, they're going to end up lifting and coming back. If you have lifting nine times out of ten, this is your issue. I can't tell you how many customers have called and said I'm having this issue. Most of your issues you can solve with by using a pillow or a Prim Perfect pad. So what happens is you insert that pillow into the garment, and any zip when you lower the platen, the zipper, seam, or button actually depresses into the pillow, so you get a flat, even heat apply application, a flat, even surface for heat applying. Now, the PrimPerfect pad is the same sort of premise, but it's it's a little bit different because what the PrimPerfect pad does is it actually elevates the print area. So what you're doing is you're manipulating around seams, buttons, or zippers, and you're kind of having those lowered below, and you're elevating the area that, just the area that you're trying to print on. What's nice about these is, is if you're printing on nylon, um, sometimes what we find an issue with nylon is if you're using the entire platen, sometimes you get maybe what we call like the square box, which you'll see later can also be prevented by using a cover sheet called a flexible application pad. Or you can elevate the surface just with what the area that you're just printing and it eliminates that big kind of top platen box that you'll get on nylon. Now, mind you, that nylon, that's going to go away. It's going to fade. It typically appears mostly when you're heat applying onto reds or navy. After a washing, it's going to fade, and over time, it's going to fade too. But um, in order to eliminate that, and also, remember, we talked about those digital transfers earlier that you want to use the craft paper with. When you're heat applying a digital transfer, you also want to use a print perfect pad as opposed to a pillow. And what's nice about these, the Print Perfect Pad is they're also cuttable and stackable. So you can use them, you can stack them to elevate your design, your area as much as you want, or you can also cut them to fit in smaller areas, hip, in a left pocket, inside of a sleeve. So that's a really nice feature about those two. So here's some accessories that are nice to have, but you don't absolutely need to get started. And the layout boards... $3.95, I think, for a pack of three. They're cardboard layout boards. They're measured. You can see the straight edge at the bottom. They're three different sizes. You see the straight edge at the bottom. They help you get a straight line. <laughs> they're, they act almost as a level, um, though it's the same way a level does. They help you get a straight line when you're applying individual and even designs. I use these all the time. Or if you have an arch design, um, that's what the half moon is for. You can line them up along there. You could see it's measured. You've got everything to get that professional look. The thermo tape you can use, which is also a really cool thing. It actually, you, when applying letters, numbers, designs, you can tape your design down so it doesn't move on you. The thermo tape, you leave it taped down. It is heat sensitive, or it's heat, well, I guess sensitive. And so, your, heat, your stuff is heat applied. After you raise the platen, you pull the tape off, you're good to go. And then it goes without saying that the thermo tape holder is a nice little handy thing to hold your thermo tape. Premass tape is also heat sensitive. And one thing you can do with that, that's also used with pressure sensitive sign vinyl, which is kind of what you see the window decals on people's cars. You can also put it on walls. So you don't really need it to heat apply. But you can also line up your designs before you're actually putting it onto the garment, kind of on a table. So you have your layout board, you line everything up nice and straight, you lay out the premass tape on it, it all sticks to the premass tape, you put it on top of the garment, everything's already straight, so you're not kind of doing this lining up as you're going, so that's handy. The letter remover solvent, we all make mistakes, we get it, it's not a perfect world, we're not perfect people. So we developed the, the letter remover solvent, and that actually works on thermal film, which will be your mainstay kind of material. Thermal film, thermal grip, and flock. And what you do is, if you make a mistake or you say, oh my God, I needed an N instead of an A, now what do I do? I don't want to have to buy a whole new garment or use a whole new garment and reprint this. You can turn the garment inside out, put the solvent on a soft cloth, and then you just kind of rub, 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 rub. And what it does is it releases the adhesive in order to pull that letter off. 
And then finally, the storage box is a super nice thing to have. I think the storage boxes are like six ninety five for your letters and numbers and even your smaller designs. But instead of kind of just keeping them in their baggies in a drawer, you have them all lined up, all laid out. So when you open the box, you can say, oh my gosh, I'm low on A's. I need to order right now. Whereas, you know, you get an order in, you've got them shoved in a drawer, you're ready to personalize on demand, and you're out of a letter. And it also just keeps things nice and organized. They're stackable. You can label them. Here's, for, here's my black. Here's my white. Here's my yellow or my gold. Here's my red and navy and so on. So those are a really nice accessory to have. The interchangeable platens, those are, you know, worth their weight in gold. They're great to have. You obviously don't need them to start off with, but they do make your life a lot easier. And they also make it easier to apply more <coughs> substrates. So for your flat press, you see the round. We, that's called the tote master. And that's actually to do kind of the end of gym bags. It's nice for doing youth stuff. It's nice and small and round. So it's just kind of a really handy press. Um, excuse me, platen. <clears throat> and then in the upper right of that picture, you see um, that one is nice for legs and sleeves. It's kind of skinnier and longer. So it's also nice for doing youth garments. And then the larger one is, I think, like 8 by 10, and that one's really nice. We call that the Tote Master. So we did also come out with an 11 by 15 platen, and that one's nice to have, like I said, because we talked about that portability or doing kind of those youth garments, and we had a high demand for an 11 by 15 platen. So that one is also going to be available for order this month. And Hotronics can custom make you a platen, whether you want a shoe platen or a platen that fits your unique niche business. If you have a need for that, they can custom make one for you. And then there's also the interchangeable cap platens, which allow you to do any size bill and any size, um, you know, low profile, high profile, etc. And then we have the business of t-shirts. This is a book that you can order um, from stalls or, yep, uh, right on stalls.com, and it is about 300 pages, every single thing you need to know about getting into decorating t-shirts. Here's the, and then down in the lower left is the flexible application pad that we talked about <clears throat> earlier. So the flexible application pad is nice for several reasons. If you want to, it's slightly texturized. And it's also almost like it, it has a real rubbery feel to it, but it's flexible. So it does two things. It really helps against that nylon box or that heat applied box, the platen box that we talked about earlier. And also, if you're applying two color letters and numbers, it's a nice thing to you use the flexible application pad on the first layer, and it creates like a nice texture to get an absolutely optimum second layer. Um, adhesion with your two color letters and numbers or your two color designs and obviously it's so then you're you're actually getting the best type of product to your customer you know without having to have things come back or any accidents the heat eraser I use for a million things you can clean your top platen with it you can clean your quick slip pad protector you can clean off your Teflon sheet but its original intent was in order to draw the heat out of a heat applied design, either if it needs to peel cool so you don't have to wait as long, or in or even for things that peel warm, you can give them a rub rub with the heat eraser and pull it off, and then it just kind of speeds up the process. Now, if you decide to go with that $200 machine that we talked about earlier, and people are coming back and they're saying, I don't know why I'm, you know, having some lifting, my designs are falling off, and you say, I need to check and see if I have cold spots. This is when you would need a heat press machine test kit. And it's nice to just test your machine every six months, maybe every year, to make sure it's calibrated, to make sure you don't have any cold spots, and um, so on. So let's move into things that all the things you can decorate with the heat press. So now you know what kind of, what size you're going to get, you know, what style you're going to get, you know, all the things you need for a heat press and you're ready to start pressing. So here we have caps, we have team sports apparel, and really, I mean, this 
this is huge. And, and I really wanted to focus on the one in the middle because you can see that is the applique look or it actually looks like it's, embro it's embroidered. You can see that so stitch in order to do warm ups and whatnot. And that is actually just supplied with a heat press. That's a product called SimStitch and it's actual twill, but it's cut with a laser, laser with a simulated stitching on the edging and so it's another thing that you can say yes to. I don't need to contract this out because I can create this design in SimStitch and just apply it with my heat press. You can see the gym bag that was applied with the heat press. <clears throat> I mean the list just goes on and on really when you just think about team sports apparel alone. Then there's also cheer and dance. So there's the cheer shells there's the their warm ups and then also leotards and swimwear. And I mean the cheer girls and boys, I don't wanna I don't wanna be gender specific. The cheer teams, they're huge. They love the bling. I mean they're traveling, they love their warm ups. They I mean it's just they have a lot of fans, their parents, their moms are crazy about what they do. And it's really the same with dance and swim as well. And then you can also move into fashion and retail. And so here on the top left, you see a screen printed transfer on the back, like we talked about earlier, and then a heat applied design with a heat transfer material called gloss. In the upper right, you see several items. Those are all applied with the heat press using a material called fashion film, which is nice because you can create a high detail, a really fine detail in it, and also it comes in a bunch of really cool colors. And also rhinestones. Rhinestones are applied with the heat press. So if you're thinking of getting into the rhinestone business or expanding into it, which is huge, you need a heat press in order to be able to do that. And then you can see down below on the left-hand corner, that entire design was applied with the heat press. The leopard print is a material uh, called a spectra print. And then there's also the fashion film in bubble gum and then fashion film metallic in order to create the design. All of it was, to, was applied with the heat press. And then in the bottom right hand corner, that's actually a dig digital transfer like the one we talked about. And that carbon fiber, you see those little polka dots there? Carbon fiber is really nice to create that kind of mesh look, or you'll see it. It's, be, it's really popular to kind of create that mesh or that whole design in letters and numbers. And carbon fiber actually has those mesh holes, and so you see kind of their pants and little girl's skirt. That's all done with carbon fiber applied over the heat, the digital design. And then also, did you know that it's you you can heat press on more than than t-shirts? I mean, there's that lunch bag up there. There's all those. There's that laptop bag. There's the basket. There's the canvas bag, koozies. I mean, really, if you can think it, you can print it. It's really that simple. You can heat apply onto leather pad folios with your heat press at a low temperature. Um, I mean, if you can test it, you can print it. If you can fit it in your heat press, you can print it. Like I said, shoes, gloves. I've seen people do golf bags with that Tote Master, um, Platin. I mean, the list just really is endless. So I guess with that, I, I do hope you have gone away with a good understanding of, you know, what it, what you need to look for in a heat press. I hope you've decided what kind of heat press you want, what style you're, you think is going to fit best into your business, and also with tons of ideas about all the things that you can do with your heat press. So um, I want to thank everybody for attending. This was just really um really a great webinar to present. And we are actually presenting the same webinar in Spanish later on this week. On Thursday, Rocio Sot is going to present the Guía para Principiantes en Estampado um, from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. And that is sponsored by Stalls ID Direct. And then also, if you are interested, um, since you're, this was really a beginner's guide, now you have a heat press, what are you going to do with it? And you don't have silkscreen equipment. Transfer Express, which 
um, provides all kinds of silkscreen transfers, they're actually going to present a webinar on July 12th, which is the ultimate beginner's guide to custom transfers. So this is a really nice segue from this webinar into the next one. So if any of you had any questions, please feel free to type them in. If you are viewing this at a later date, if you're kind of just coming in on the blog post, um, feel free to contact us at info at Great Garment Graphics. You can also comment in the blog post. You can also find us on Twitter at GGG Graphics. We're on Facebook, Stalls All Things Heat Printing. And I just really want to let you know that we are your heat printing source. And so if you have any sort of um, things you're wondering or thinking, feel free to contact me directly or look through the Great Garment Graphics archives in order to get a ton of ideas, in order to get some direction on anything you want to know about heat printing. So once again, I'd like to thank you for attending and have an amazing and prosperous day. Thank you.